Hello and welcome to Colour Multimedia Enterprises. My name is Luke, also known as Tianary, and in this particular tutorial, we will be taking a look at tile sheets and being able to draw our own tile maps. So, without further ado, let's get started. Hello, so as mentioned in the introductory video, what we will be taking a look at in this particular tutorial is taking a look at tile sets. Now I've gone over onto the Open Game Art website, I've taken a look at some royalty free assets. So there's some on the public domain, which a person called Denzi has done. I believe it was re-uploaded by someone else, but the original author is Denzi. You can find his assets on that website, I'll provide a link in the description below. Um, I'm not going to redistribute the assets that I'll be using in this tutorial with the with this video for I mean there's no there's no legal reasons why I can't do it but I prefer that I don't just to yeah whatever <laughs> But yeah, so we're going to be taking a look at tile sets and we're in particular going to take a look at the tile sheet class, which is what OpenFL provides us. So if you take a look here, we've got this bitmap data and we've got this thing called copy pixels, right? Now what OpenFL is going to be doing is just going to be doing exactly that with the tile sheet class. It does all of these copy pixels operations that so that we don't have to do it ourselves. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into SRC and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it game. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to call it core. So, this inside core, I'm going to put in tile map. Now, a tile map is basically the idea that you can create a tile sheet and you can make a map with what you've used that tile sheet for. So when we come to taking these tile sets and putting it into the game, we'll be putting it into a tile map and then we render the tile map, if that makes sense. So this is going to extend a bitmap I'm not going to extend the sprite this time because we don't need to interact with it in any way and within tile map I'm going to put in a few variables so the first one is going to be a tile sheet that's going to be a private var so that is going to be a tile sheet what I'm also going to do is provide the bitmap data that we want to use so we're going to say uh, part of our image. It's going to be bitmap data. And do, 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 do. no, no, that's fine. Actually, I'll make a few public variables. So here I'm going to say offset x. Oops, offset x. It's going to be an int public var offset y int. And also, I'm going to create a map as well, a hash table. So I'm going to have uh, a table which is going to be a map that is going to contain a string and an int. So first of all I need to type in super. So what the super does is it's going to say, okay, I want to get a bitmap. So in this public function new I'm going to put in uh, bitmap data. It's going to be bitmap data. We'll put that into the super and that's it. That can be null if we want it to, but we're not going to let it. <laughs> um, 
Then we're going to say image is equal to bitmap data. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to initialize the tile sheet. So I'm going to create a new tile sheet and this takes several parameters, so or one parameter, and that's this image one here. So I'm going to say bitmap data in there. Now what we can do is we can say, okay, I want to now add certain things to that tile sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a public function and I'm going to call it init. So I'll explain all this in a minute. Um, so in this init function, I'm going to say I want to initialize this tile sheet. So set it all up so that we can then use it later. Um, so in here, I'm going to say <coughs> X, so we're going to set, so this is going to be an int, Y, that's going to be an int, and we are also going to ask for a table. So, a table, which is going to be a map of the top of the string and int. Okay, so what's this all doing, and why are we doing all this? So, what the tile sheet does is it's going to hold some data regarding uh, associated with a particular bitmap. So when we come to using the assets.getBitmapData and getting the bitmap for one of these dungeon tiles here, which is what I'm going to be using to start with, is I'm basically going to say, okay, I want to put that in there. And then as we're going through, as we're going to be signing up with the image here, we're going to create a new tile sheet and that is going to contain a bit more data. When we then do things like this, we have functions like add tile rect. Now what this does is it's going to take a certain region within those tile, within that sprite sheet or whatever you want to call it, that bitmap image. And then it's going to add that rectangle that you defined to the tile sheet so that when we want to draw the tiles eventually to any bitmap which is what we will be doing to this tile map here that's what we will be using so we'll then use draw tiles and the tile data which is going to be an array of floats that's going to take the x position the y position and the index that the tile of the tile to render as you can see in the description of that function so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say offset x is equal to x offset y is equal to y So eventually, if we decided that we wanted to change that image, like say, for example, we're um, going to add some kind of um, spooky way of changing the terrain all of a sudden, then all we have to do is change that image, right? That makes sense. And maybe we want to reinitialize it. So we can only, so we can just use the same tile map if we wanted to. Right? would be kind of stupid to a certain extent, but it really just depends on the situation and where you want to go with it. So I'm just gonna keep it in for the time being. Now this table, this map, is a key of a type string and a value of a type int. So I'll tell you what that's all about in a moment. So what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, I want to assign a certain strings and ends to this table and stuff like that. So we're taking the reference to a table and we want to assign that. So we're going to say table is equal to table and then table and then we'll be able to set values but we don't know where to get those values and we don't know how we want to set those values. So.
another thing that I'm going to do is take in another variable and that's going to be data. So we're going to use some JSON to actually identify all these bitmaps and stuff like that. So I'm going to import JSON and I'm not, I'm not doing this right. Data path. So this is going to be a string and that's going to be the path to the data that's going to describe what the tiles are within this. So let's take a look at one of these images, shall we? And uh, let's take a look at this one. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we've got lots of different tiles here so we've got 32 by 32 these are all 32 by 32 as you can probably tell um if we zoom in take a look so we've got walls here floor wall floor that sort of thing so this these are all um sprites for a dungeon or multiple dungeons if you want so if we were to take this example what you would have is in this JSON file, we would have an X position and a Y position. We would have an offset of X and offset of Y, which is basically um, the width and height of each tile, which is going to be 32 by 32 in this case. And what we want to do is define the string value of that wall. So we could just say wall if we wanted to, but that wouldn't be a good idea because what a map does is it's going to hold a string and an int. In fact, we don't even need to do that anymore. That's going to be a new string map int. Now, where the int comes in is where, oops, is where the add tile rex comes in so i'll show you in a moment so we've got this data path here and we want to be able to read the json file so let's just create another so we've got this info folder here so i'll just create a text file in that data text Ugh. no that's too generic uh, da, da, da. Okay, dungeon tiles. Let's call it dungeon tiles, shall we? Dot JSON. So let's open that up. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at an image. So we so we want to take the path, and that path is going to be this one here. So I'm just going to copy the path here. I'm just going to type in tile sets because uh, because that's where they're held and I'm just going to copy that so this is the format of JSON and then in here I'm going to say data and this is going to be an array and within this data we're going to have several objects of this array so I'm going to say <coughs> so first of all I'm going to put here width is going to be 32 Height is going to be 32. That needs to be a comma there as well. And in here I'm going to say X. So let's take a look at the position. So by the looks of it, that says 32 by 32. So we'll say 32, 32. So that's the, this is the first index. So this is the first one here. So I'm going to say, hmm. now what does that kind of look like to you? I'm not 100% sure myself to be honest, but let's just take a guess. A gooey wall, let's say. No, 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 that's not what I meant to do. Name, that's what I meant to do. Gooey wall. We'll put number one there as well. So we'll go on to the next one. So I'll put an X position 
and the next one is going to be not 48 64 on the x-axis and 32 on the y-axis and I'm going to put in another name it's going to be GUI ball 2 right do you see what where we're going with this maybe still on the floor actually so I shall do the first one here so So the next position of 32, Y position 64, and the name is going to be GUI Floor 1. Okay, so we'll just leave that for the time being. So in here, so we already know where, where we're going to get that path anyway, because Obviously, we're going to be assigning the image there, so maybe we don't actually need that. But what we will need definitely is the width and height because we haven't actually defi defined that in the in this bit here. So when we init, we're going to say offset x is equal to x. So this x, in fact, we'll just do it all from the data path. So. What we're going to do is we will take that data from that JSON file. So let's go back to, have I set it up in the XML file? Yes, I have. Got info, dot text, dot JSON. So I included both of those, so that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that JSON. And the way that we do that is we do var data. So that's going to be a dynamic variable. We're going to get JSON dot parse, and the way we're going to get the text is assets. I need to import that. Import assets. OpenFL dot assets. Make sure it's OpenFL dot assets and not line. Get text and the data path, which is what we're going to be referencing. So the data path in this case is going to be that path here for to it to the dungeon tiles.json. So that's going to parse that JSON file and then it's going to put it into data. So instead of doing X and Y or what I'm going to do is data.x or width even and data.height. So you can probably tell what what that's referencing is width and height here. Then we've got data here, which is containing all of these uh, variables here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for loop. So I'm going to say for i in zero dot 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 data dot data dot length. I know that's a bit silly, but that's the way it is. Um, in fact, let's call this obj instead, just to make just to be able to distinguish between them. Probably easier. Okay, so obj dot data dot length. So that's going to take the length of this array here, which at the moment is only three. So we're going to take that, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take each tile info. So I'm just going to say tile info is equal to obj dot data dot no i like that. So we're taking the index of each object within this array and we're going to read its content right so it's, we've got an x a y and a name so in here what i'm going to do is i'm going to say table dot set so the key is a string so we want to get tile info dot name so that's the string value so this is that bit here, this name here. So the first one is going to be GUI wall one, tile info dot name, and then we're going to say tile sheet dot add tile rect, and then we're going to define the rectangle. So rectangle, which is this one here, 
So I want to get the obj.x, obj.y, and the width is going to be offset x and offset y. And then we'll just leave the rest. So now we have, so we are setting a key and a value. So the value is going to be the index that's returned by this add tile rect. So this, this, as you can see in the return, it says an int representing the ID of a single tile rect. So every time we add a tile to that tile sheet, it's going to increase that index which means that when we come to reference it by the name we'll be able to be able to grab that index from that tile sheet and be able to render it onto the screen so that no in order to do that what we're going to do is we're going to get another public function and we're going to call this draw map 